Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice the Radio. So today, we need to go and have a little bit of a chat about Malamar V and Malamar V Max. Always nice to look at them in the same video. Not always possible, mind you, but where it is, I like to do so. Revealed on the official website today, translated by the lovely Antoine Boulet. And if we start off having a bit of a look at the basics, we've got 210 HP, which is about right for a Pokemon V. It's on the slightly higher side. We've got a retreat cost of two, which means free retreat with air balloon, if that's what you're going for. And we've got a weakness to grass, which could be a pain if Rillaboom ever becomes a, a bit of a thing, which it looks like it might. And you're a darkness Pokemon. Which means Black Market Prism Star, so you give up one fewer prize. It means weakness on, well, all psychic Pokemon nowadays, like in DDV. It means that you can use Weavile to move energy around after you've accelerated it with stuff like, oh, I don't know, the Naganadal from Lost Thunder, as a lovely example. So we got some stuff. We got some love for Darkness Pokemon at the moment. But what does it do? Well, according to the lovely Antoine Boulet, the first attack for one darkness, one colorless energy, switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of their bench. This attack does 30 damage to the new active Pokemon. Oh. Yeah, that's actually really good. Now, there will be times, not, not often, mind you, all right? Not going to happen often. But there will be times where you can find something like a Magikarp sitting on the bench. So you drag the Magikarp active and you do enough damage to get a KO and life is good. It's not going to happen very often. I suppose it's probably slightly more relevant at the moment to suggest people might be playing Sinisty. Given that Poltegeist is quite a nice Pokemon. So you can get KOs on them. Might even be worth whacking a Vitality Band into the deck, given that Ditto Prism Star will continue to see a lot of play until it rotates. So, you know, drag that off the bench, do 40, get a KO. It's not a phenomenal attack for getting KOs. You'll get lucky occasionally. There'll be the odd time you can use this to get a KO, but I wouldn't get excited and start imagining that you're going to be getting multiple KOs with this because you're just not going to be doing so. What this is better for is actually stranding things in the active and then starting to chip away. So just yesterday, I showed you the new card, Gala Mine. And Gala Mine increases the retreat cost of any Pokemon by two colorless energy. So see where we're going with this? The point here is you pop a Gala Mine down in play. You drag something active with Malamar, and now their retreat cost is increased, hopefully to the point that they're just not going to be able to get out of the active, and you can have a jolly good time around it. That's where I see this attack working. There will be the odd cheeky KO you can get with this, and that's lovely, but most of the time, it's just going to be for dragging stuff in the active to buy yourself a bit of time. Dragging stuff in the active so you can two free hit KO, hoping that your opponent doesn't grab a switch to get it out the active. And with stuff like Gala Mine around at the moment, and maybe even consider Absol here, if you're dragging a basic into the active, increases the retreat cost by one per Absol. And this could really help you out. Now, the second attack here, two darkness, one colorless energy, 130 damage. The defending Pokemon is now confused. It's not a phenomenal attack. It's fine, but it's not a phenomenal attack. Confusion is nice if your opponent wants to attack, they have to flip a coin, and if they flip tails, the attack fails, and they take 30 damage instead. That's all right. And 130 damage is fine. Certainly, if you're hitting for weakness most of the time, you will be getting a one-hit KO here. And confusion can be awkward, and again, this is a disruptive Pokemon, and in the same way the first attack is great for Gallimine, so is a second attack as well. If you confuse your opponent's active, they want to get out the active, lest they have to risk it on a flip. And sure, there are going to be turns where they've got some kind of switching card, but there's going to be plenty of turns where they don't. So if you can get something like Gala Mine down and they're unable to get out the active, then they've got to do that flip for confusion, and then it becomes a whole lot better. If they flip tails on confusion, you're basically doing 160, and they're not attacking you, and you get the next hit. And then you hit them again with this attack, you're up to 290, and that's pretty phenomenal. 
I should mention Parasect here because that means that confused Pokemon take two damage counters between turns. And it's only a stage one. So if you really want to go down the confusion route, this could be something to have a little bit of a think about. But if I'm honest with you, I don't see this as the main reason to play the card. I like the first attack. It's a weak attack, but it's really nice in the early game for mucking around with your opponent's Pokemon. I don't mind this attack, but I'm not all in love with it. It, it is very much fine. But it's the V Max that I think we're getting the most mileage from here. You go up to 310 HP, which is all right for a V Max. Not terribly low, not terribly high. The other basics remain the same. But you do give up a third prize when KO'd. Don't do it against grass decks. But now you get a really, really nice attack. Two darkness, one colorless energy. So the same cost we were using before. 180 damage. Your opponent reveals their hand. Choose one card you find there. And put it on the bottom of their deck. This I like very, very much indeed. This is the ha ha ha, now you can't do anything kind of attack. This, I think 180 is quite good. But really what we're doing here is making sure that your opponent isn't going to respond next turn. Because looking at the hand is brilliant. You can already see their board. Their discard pile is public knowledge. You can look through it if you need to. And then you look at their hand. So, as long as you've got a bit of knowledge about their deck, you're going to be able to make, hopefully, a pretty good prediction as to what they would like to do next turn. So, you choose a card which is going to be most useful for what they want to do next turn, put it on the bottom of their deck, and now they're not able to use it. You are ruining their plans. This is absolutely lovely. And, of course, we can start pushing this. We can do this on our own, right? 180 damage and get rid of a card from their hand is a good attack. It's going to help you out. It's going to work a lot. But we can try a little bit harder. How about Jesse and James? Each player discards two cards from their hand. Your opponent discards first. So now they're discarding two cards from their hand. And look, we all know that it's their choice. So they are going to discard the two least useful cards from their hand. I know that and you know that. But the difference here is that they're then reducing their options. When you discard cards from your hand, you generally have to change a game plan. All of a sudden, the amount of options you had go down and your, your margin for error becomes a lot less. And then you use this attack to hurt them. In terms of getting cards out of their hand, I am not going to pretend this is better than Honchkrow GX. It's not. Honchkrow GX for two energy, you get to discard two cards from their hand. And you get the choice of which ones to discard. But it's a once per game GX attack that doesn't do any damage. Rather than an every turn attack which does 180. That's my point here. And, of course, if you're lucky, you can drag a Pokemon active using the first attack on the V, chip away a little bit, and then finish them off with this attack. And then it becomes really, really nice. Maybe you can use a Vitality Band, drag a Zacian V active to do 40 damage, at which point 180 will then get a KO. And the problem with Zacian V is that they've got the ability, but that ends their turn. So that's not the best way to accelerate energy when they're in the active. And they use Metal Saucer, but again, that works when they're on the bench, especially if you've got Gallimine to stop them retreating here. And you might be able to do 40, they can't get out the active, you hit them for 180 to take two prizes, then take the best card in their hand and put it on the bottom of their deck, and now this all works fine. This is a card, or a pair of cards really, that work in sync with each other. It is about confusing and dragging them active and wasting time and increasing their retreat cost with Gallimine until you're ready to start rocking the VMAX attack and then hopefully taking big KOs while getting rid of the best cards in their deck. And if you want to bring in some hand disruption like Jesse and James, go for it. Because here's the other thing. Let's say we're getting quite late in the game. Reset Stamp. Reset Stamp them down to one or two cards in their hand, then start using this attack. And if you put them down to a two card hand and you get to choose a card to put at the bottom of their deck, the chances are that they're not gonna have two cards that can draw them out of it. 
that's when Malamar V Max becomes really, really good. This is a Pokemon that is primed for gigantic comebacks. This is, you put your opponent down to a one or two card hand, knock out their only viable attacker, and keep using this attack knowing that they aren't going to be able to draw out of it unless they have a really lucky top deck. We saw the Oceania International Championships won last weekend by a combination of Reset Stamp to 1 and then Stinger GX to put the player down to three prize cards remaining with one card in hand and not a great board. And I see this as a very similar kind of thing. You can go down multiple prizes here, but if you can reset stamp them down to a low hand size, knock out their only good attacker, and then just keep getting rid of the best card in their hand, you could see yourself winning with this, even from big comebacks. It's a phenomenal comeback card, but it's not just a comeback card. You can get this rolling in the early game and get a bit of a soft lock going here as well. I absolutely love it. I'm giving it four wassies, and that feels like I might be being a little bit harsh. But if I am being a little bit harsh, let me know in the comment section. If you've got some other hand disruption combos that you think will work particularly well with this Pokemon, let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darned awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.